this presentation was was uh, all about what I called reliability 4.0 and not that that's a actually jargon that's being used out there I just think it's a good thing for us all to think about because for our own future benefits for us all to continue to be uh, effective members of the organizations we work for uh, we need to see how we can really deliver value to the organization and I would say that it's not just about seeing the future it's improving the future so since I yeah, I don't know if anyone else has ever said reliability 4.0. I just make things up sometimes. But, you know, reliability 1.0 is just reactive maintenance, replace it when it fails, and hopefully get good at it. Reliability 2.0 is, you know, where the old-fashioned condition monitoring and pre preventive maintenance, where people are still doing time-based maintenance. And using condition monitoring is just a bit of a, it's like the canary in the coal mine kind of idea. Oh, something's going on. Um, We'll just keep, you know, watching it sort of thing. Reliability 3.0 is condition, true condition-based maintenance and the typical sort of reliability improvements that have been made over the last, you know, 20, 25 years or whatever. You know, improving our alignments of equipment and balancing and installation and lubrication and you know, doing those sort of obvious things. And, and that's all great. You know, for me, reliability 4.0 is just, is just, taking that extra step and making sure that the organization does have the culture, make sure that everyone has a focus on the business goals, that we're sharing knowledge, and that basically we are doing everything to proactively eliminate the root causes of faults. So we're not just reacting to faults when they come up. Um, we, are, we are interpreting or anticipating where they're gonna come and taking the necessary steps, looking at procurement, design, um, acceptance testing, spares management, all those areas uh, to, to get ahead of it. Um, so rather than just, you know, um, letting the equipment develop faults, uh, but so the idea is to stop equipment from developing faults, not just detecting the faults. We wanna keep the bearings and all the other equipment uh, in good condition. So how do you get there? Now, this I don't want this to come across as some sort of commercial, but over you know, quite a few years, we've been working on this thing called asset reliability transformation. Now, we don't have the time to go into it all. If you are watching a replay of this, you could pause it and sort of look at this in a bit more detail. This is just general information, but I think a lot of this is missed in a lot of people's condition monitoring and reliability programs. It all starts with understanding value. You need to understand how all of your condition monitoring and reliability improvement uh, tasks and activities help the organization. And you need to prioritize everything that will have so that what you do has the greatest impact to help the organization. You're developing that business case, being able to speak the language of finance and economics to be able to convince management and everyone else in the organization that what you're doing is important. You need to have a strategy, you know, a team and, and get organized and all of that. You must have motivated, engaged and competent people, you know, strong leadership, strong company wide buy in not just the reliability group focusing on this stuff. Everyone needs to understand how they all benefit so they can all identify problems, they can all identify opportunities for improvement and contribute to the process of making those improvements. Now, in a moment, I'll talk about um, the things that we want to do to be best in class reliability, but there's a big roadblock and that's reactive maintenance. There's a lot of organizations, possibly yours, that have tried in the past to really master condition monitoring and reliability improvement, but you get stuck in this vicious cycle of, of equipment failures and reactive maintenance. So we need to take some proactive steps to just get on top of that. Then we can say, right, right from day one, we're going to make sure we don't import trouble into the plant. 
eliminate defects via improved design and procurement, vendor selection, quality assurance, quality control. We're going to do everything with discipline. You know, we'll have workflows and procedures and uh, standards and everything with the maintenance work we do and the way we operate the equipment. We will, so we'll set it up. We'll, we'll make sure it's good when it comes into the company. We'll be disciplined in the way we set up the equipment to operate. We'll care for it while it is being operated. We'll always use data-driven decisions. So condition-based maintenance is data-driven decisions. Um, but we need to go beyond that. We'll have KPIs. We'll look at how everything we do um, affects the uh, performance of the organization. When there are near misses or failures, uh, we will we will learn from that. It's you know it's root cause analysis, but a bit more than that. And then we'll continually optimize everything we do. So we'll be in this sort of cycle of reliability of discipline, care, analytics, and optimize, continually improving what we've got to do. Anyway, so um, if you want more information about that process, yeah, feel free to contact me.